Hello. So today I wanted to talk about research assistant jobs. A couple of months ago now, I made a day in the life vlog where I took you guys on my day uh, working as a research assistant from home. And I didn't actually go into too much detail about what I actually do. And that's because it's a little bit hard to explain without uh, going to the context of the type of research that I'm involved in. I think like in general, research assistant jobs uh, vary a lot between different workplaces and different projects. And so that's why I decided to make a video about it. And so first of all, I wanna explain what I do at my job and then go over different types of other research assistant jobs that are available in psychology and what tasks they might do. And yeah, in this video, I probably won't go over how to actually get an RA job. I might leave it for the next video because otherwise it'll be a bit too long. But of course, if you have any questions, uh, comment down below. I'll be happy to talk more about it. Something I didn't realize when I first started studying psychology is that there's this research side of it and that you're not limited to uh, becoming a psychologist in the future or working with clients doing counseling. There is a whole other, I guess, area of psychology that people don't really talk about or I haven't really heard many people talk about. And yeah, if you want to check out, I did make a video about different types of jobs you might get after graduating. But yeah, like I guess research is one area you might w wish to check out and go into. And I think uh, getting a research assistant job is probably the best way to dip your toes into this industry. It's relatively easy to get into, especially after you've done your honors year. And so my current job is at a company that develops tests for allied health professionals, including psychologists. And because most tests are generally made in the US, our job here in Australia is to adapt these tests for Australian and New Zealand population. And so that mainly involves things like changing the language, like a lot of the spelling in Australia and New Zealand is following the UK spelling rather than the US spelling, like with the Zs and the extra U's. <laughs> but we also change a couple of cultural things as well. Like if you see something like mentioning scallions, we use uh, spring onions instead, things like that. Another part of this work is to standardize these tests in the Australian and New Zealand population. And what that means is if you want to diagnose a person with a condition like uh, depression or figure out how they're performing on a test that measures their memory, let's say, you need to be able to compare them to the population and see whether they're performing higher or lower than the average person on the test. And you figure out like the average or how people generally do on that test by collecting data and testing these people and making sure that the data that you collect is representative of the population as possible. And even though like we can argue that people in the US are pretty similar to the Australian population, there are differences. And so if we test an Australian person and compare them to US uh, averages or norms or on how the general US population has performed on the test, we might not be able to judge Australian people performance accurately. They might actually be performing on an average level in Australia, but then uh, in the US, they might be below or above average. And that could lead to inaccurate diagnoses. And so what we do after adapting the test for language and making it appropriate to use in Australia and New Zealand, uh, we collect data all over Australia and New Zealand and see how people perform on a particular test that we're working on. And then we come up with norms and standardized scores based on the performance. This data is actually collected by people who are qualified to do the tests. And so they're generally clinicians, they could be psychologists if it's a psychology tests, and occupational therapists if it's a test that OTs use. And my job, <laughs> sorry for the long spiel. So my job is essentially assisting on all aspects of this project. So I do a lot of checking and proofreading of the tests themselves, making sure that we change all the US spelling and like across different parts of the tests, uh, we change things consistently. And one project I was working on, we were preparing the test to be published. So I was doing a lot of checking on that before the publication goes ahead to make sure that there was no mistakes in the final proofs. And yeah, just making sure that the formatting looks good and that the test works both on paper and on digital versions. And I think the these particular tasks are very specific to this particular job. So 
I think this is why my job kind of differs from other research assistant jobs. And we have the other side of my job, and that's making sure that the projects and the data collection are run smoothly. And that's more similar to your typical research assistant jobs that you might get. And that involves tasks like uh, writing and proofreading ethics applications that we're preparing, making material for recruitment of participants, answering questions about the study, and creating all sorts of spreadsheets to track different parts of the project, such as um, how many gift cards we give away and to whom we're giving away gift cards, and making sure like the data comes in and that we have all the different parts of the data that is needed. And a lot of these tasks involves managing the clinicians who are collecting the data for us. This involves tasks like reviewing the tests that they send back to us to make sure that they've done them correctly and like answering the queries and helping like with the process of sending out the test materials to them so that they can do the tests. I think most uh, research assistant jobs, they'll involve similar tasks, but they'll probably be a bit more directly involved with the participants themselves. Like you won't have that middle person who is doing the data collection for you. And you might be even asked to administer the test themselves or like watch people answer questions, for example. And so this was my job. Like there are aspects that are different uh, and aspects that are obviously <laughs> like you know, any other research assistant job. And I think that in general, you can divide these roles into two types. Like one is more uh, related to the project management or logistics side of things, and one that is more based on research. And I think that each position can be a bit more skewed towards one or the other, or be somewhere in between and have a mix of both things. I think my job is more focused towards the project management stuff. So in other words, I don't do a whole lot of uh, reading articles and thinking about research questions, let's say thinking about concepts behind test development. That's not really a part of my job. And there's not a lot of like writing manuscripts focused public on publication type of stuff that I do. And RA jobs that are more focused on research, they might involve tasks such as finding, screening and reading articles. For example, if you're helping prepare a literature review, in, you might be also asked to search for articles to make sure that your team has covered all the research that there is available on the topic and that there's nothing that might contradict, let's say, your findings or to make sure that your study really is the first study to attempt to do something. And you might also be involved with running analyses and also doing the preparation of data, such as uh, cleaning and checking data before it is analyzed, and also helping write the manuscript. And I think these types of jobs might allow for a bit more of your input on the topic that you are researching. But again, it does vary depending on what kind of team you're in and also the scope of the project. I think these jobs have a more more explicit requirement of really knowing and understanding the topic, or at least learning or being open to learning the ins and outs of the topic and really coming up with like a very comprehensive knowledge base. And of course, like a lot of these jobs, they do just kind of ask for a basic psychology degree and do expect you to learn on the job. So yeah, don't be put off if you don't know something. You are, of course, allowed to learn on the job, just as long as you're open to it. And I think RA jobs in general also vary depending on where you are working and on what basis. So there are jobs that uh, employ you on a casual basis, and that means that your hours of work vary depending on where you are in the project and how much help the principal investigator needs from you. And I'd say that a lot of university-based RA positions are employ you on a casual or temporary basis. So it means that you're employed for a specific project and if there is no work, then you don't work and you don't get paid. Or you might be employed on an ongoing basis and you only work if you are needed to do something. And I think this is common if you're working for an academic compared to a wider research center, because uh, normally the amount of funding that is given to one academic is limited and for a specific purpose, as opposed to a research center with multiple academics that are employed. And I think research centers generally employ you on a part-time or a full-time basis. So your job is a little bit 
more stable in terms of income and perhaps workload as well and hours. And you can work at, in a research center that is university based as well, or ones that are more in the community and might have some affiliation to universities. And a lot of not for profit uh, organizations that do provide uh, mental health services. They uh, also have research projects running and so they might employ uh, RAs for that. And normally that's for a specific project, but generally the work is stable. And finally, the type of tasks that you'll do as a research assistant will vary depending on what the topic is about and what the project is. So for example, if your study uh, has something to do with brain structures or it's about uh, looking at different brain regions and what they're involved in. Then in addition to the tasks that I've mentioned, you might be involved in the brain imaging process. So you could be helping operate an EEG or MRI machine or any other uh, brain imaging method that might be used for your study. And if your study is involved with a mental disorder, you might be uh, conducting clinical interviews with participants or uh, as opposed to doing an actual study and collecting data for that, you, your project might be a systematic review or some kind of other literature review. So you won't be collecting the data, but doing a lot of searching and reading articles instead. And so, yeah, like I said in the be beginning, no two research assistant jobs are the same and they do vary a lot in the tasks. Like there are some similarities, but there are a lot of differences. So I hope you found this video helpful and providing a bit more information and clarity on what research assistant jobs might look like. And do let me know if you have any questions down below and if you want to see any more research related videos. Thank you for watching. See you guys next time.